which is going to be the Microsoft Office integration. So this does not come with the reader version. This is something that is going to come with the standard or pro version is this integration with Microsoft Office. Okay. Now Office, the application we've all known and loved, uh, and is probably the staple of pretty much all of our work on a regular basis. You know, whether we're writing letters in Word or producing financial statements in Excel or creating presentations in PowerPoint, it's an application that is pretty much ubiquitous to any Western style organization. Well, Acrobat has a incredible and very, very, very useful integration with Office, which allows you to bring a lot of the features and power of Acrobat directly into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and more. It allows you, for example, to create PDFs and virtually one click from the Acrobat tab of the ribbon in whatever application you happen to work with. And it also brings in features of creating PDFs. For example, you can add protection. If you want to restrict editing or password protect or encrypt a document, you can do it all right inside of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Okay. You could also send things out. You can use the send and track plugin in Microsoft Outlook, as well as in other office applications. So I can create a document and just send it to you. And with the tracking capabilities, I can see, Hey, did Steve actually open it up or did he, uh, you know, just disregard that email. Okay. I can also, for example, send things out for signature directly inside of word. One of my absolute favorite functions. So I can write the contract, the agreement, the engagement letter inside of word, and then send it off to that person for review and consideration. Okay. We can also import in comments from PDF files into a source word document. So if we happen to use word to create our thing and we send it out for PDF for comment for other people, when they reply back on that PDF with comments, I can ingest those comments directly inside of word to get those feedback from them. Okay. And we can also create very high quality PDFs. One of the things I really like about this application is the fact that we can choose what quality we will generate our PDFs in. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over and take a look at what it looks like to create documents inside of word, and then be able to publish them out inside of inside of, uh, Acrobat. Alrighty. So I am in a modern version of Microsoft word here. Nothing fancy about it. I'm just running the office 365 suite. And I do have the full version of Acrobat inside of Microsoft word here. Okay. So I'm running the full version. We're going to take a look at Acrobat here in a minute, but I want to draw your attention to when you are working inside of word, Excel, PowerPoint, or any of these applications, and you have the full version, either the standard or pro version of Acrobat installed, you're going to get this friendly little Acrobat toolbar right up here up at the top. And so we could see here from this Acrobat toolbar, which will typically be the most right of the toolbar. You'll see in here, we can, for example, create our PDFs automatically. We can access our preferences. And then we also have a range of other workflows, like for example, creating a PDF and sharing it or mail merging it, sending it off for review or comment, and also running custom actions inside of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our preferences in here, just to kind of give you a sense of what you can do. So inside of our preferences for Acrobat inside of Word, all the stuff that we would come to expect, for example, what type of document to create. By default, it's going to create a standard document. However, because I have the premium version, the full version, the pro version, I also have availability to create other types of documents too, including things that are compliance driven. For example, that PDF A and PDF X. Now, for most of you, that's probably not going to mean much. But for those of you who are in the printing or graphic design business, you know, those are standards essentially for publishing and I can print right out of word to meet those exact compliance standards in either the RGB or CMYK color set. I can also choose my personal favorite, which is smallest file size. 99 times out of hundred, when I'm creating a document, 
I'm not creating it for myself. I'm creating it to what? I'm creating it to send it to somebody else. As such, if I can make it smaller so it can send through email, the better. So if I use the conversion size, smallest size possible, it is going to preemptively and proactively compress the images and make the document as small as it can possibly be. And it could be the difference of several megabytes in size. I've written books, for example, that have tons of screenshots and tons of other things inside of it that will make it a big file. But if I select the smallest file size, you know what? It makes that and it shrinks that document down so that I can send it through email. So selecting that smallest size possible is something I personally would recommend, and it's a good tip. Now, other options that we can do with respect to our workflow, whether or not we open up the Adobe application afterwards so that we can preview our work or just save it quietly, whether or not we should prompt for a file name, whether or not we should uh, collect and convert different document information and other stuff too. If we come down here to our application settings, whether or not we should include the source file, if we select that particular option, it will actually include the Excel file, the PowerPoint document, the word file in the actual PDF itself. So the original file will be in there. Now, one of my other major favorite functions is this create bookmarks. I'm going to talk about more about that in a moment, but in a nutshell, what that create bookmarks allows you to do is it allows you to bring in navigation. If you look over here to the right-hand side, you'll see that I've got a listing of the different sections of my document. And if you click on these different sections, it will jump you to where you're supposed to go. Okay. And in for me, especially when you're creating a big old PDF, you know, creating that kind of, um, let's call it organization is essential for navigating a big old document. So creating bookmarks and adding links, in my opinion, are two of the best features of the Adobe integration. We'll talk about that in here in a minute. When you're setting up your documents, you need to be a little proactive, but with a little proactivity on your part, it's going to make the PDF generation so much easier. Now, if we switch over here to our security right from word, this is where we can start to apply security settings. So by default, it's going to be at that 128 bit AES advanced encryption standards for what you're working with. And it will be compatible with people running Adobe Acrobat seven or later to put it into perspective. Adobe Acrobat seven probably came out in 2000. So, you know, I, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, so, you know, I think, I think it's reasonable to assume most people have a device. It's at least in the last 20 years. So if we want to create a password for somebody to be able to open this document, whether or not we want to restrict their ability to be able to edit this document, we have that functionality present right here. Now it's important to note, we'll talk more about this in a future podcast, best practices with respect to, uh, security for documents. There's a difference between a password to open the document and a password to change the document. Uh, you can have one or both or neither. If you want, most of the time I have neither, I'm just sending stuff and you can open it, you know, but if it's something secured with maybe confidential information, well, I can put a password. And when I put a password up here, this encrypts the document. It prevents this document from just being opened by anybody. Now, if you're going to do this, make sure you choose a long and strong password. There's a direct correlation in a password strength with its length and complexity. You know, a five character password is practically worthless, you know, but you put in a 20 character password and then you send that password through another communication method. Like if you're going to email this document, don't email the password as well, text it or call them. You're probably going to be okay. Now down here, we have our restrict access settings. So if I want to, for example, prevent somebody from being able to print this or whether or not I want to prevent them from being able to make changes, this is where I can add workflow authentication, workflow security to that item it's, it's, it's itself. Now I mentioned a little bit ago how you can create organization inside of your documents. And it's actually super simple. I'm going to go ahead and remove this real quick, and then we're going to come back and add it here in a minute. So let me just go ahead and delete it. And we're going to add our table of contents here in a minute. Now to add organization in your documents, it is super, super simple. And it's something I don't see it enough 
financial professionals doing, you know, they just kind of are always manually creating things on their own. Like for example, selecting text and then selecting the font size and putting in the colors and adjusting the, the boldness instead of using styles. Okay. Right smack dab here on the home tab, right in the middle, you'll see you've got the styles section. Okay. And you'll notice you will always have a title slide, a subtitle heading one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. All you have to do to create bookmarks and links inside of your document is to use these style options. And it will not only create that organization for you, but it will also make your life so much easier because instead of having to select the text and then coming over here and selecting the font you want and selecting the size and whether or not it should be bolded and doing all that one by one, all you have to do is select the text and hit heading one or hit heading two or three. And you notice as I start to change these different items, it will automatically adjust that style and that visual appearance for us. So to use navigation, to use hierarchy, to use links, all you have to use are these styles. And as you're writing your different documents, you select what you want. Like this is a heading one as an example. Now, if you've got something minor inside of it, you know, like in this section here, do you want to use the cloud with your license? Okay. This section is a heading two and you'll see it's kind of jut over. It doesn't get the same promotion that a heading one would get. And likewise, if we keep going down here, you'll eventually see, for example, heading three and heading four and heading five, as we work through the different aspects of our document. And as we select different headers, you know, in this particular case, you'll notice on the right side in the navigation plane, it will correspondingly move in or out as needed. Now, when we want to add our table of contents, all we, sh we can do it at any point in the document, but it's always best to do it right at the beginning. Come to a blank page, come on over here to the references menu. On the left hand side, you'll see table of contents listed, and then you can choose the table of contents that you would like. And it'll drop that in automatically. Now, if you make a change, for example, you can click this update table and it will update that table correspondingly for you. Now, going forward, all you have to do is come on over here to the Acrobat tab and click that create PDF. And when you click that create PDF, it will generate a new version of that file for you. So let's go ahead and save that here. And that new version will also have the links inside of it. So we'll just give that a second here to create, and then you're going to see it's going to open up an Acrobat.